Welcome back to my channel. This is Jen Restyle and Fashion and this week I'm going to show you how to make this drop waist bubble skirt. All right, let's get into it. So first I had to find a pair of jeans that fit and fit snug. So I'd already cut the bottoms off of these. Hopefully the pockets aren't so low. Where's the skirt? All right, hopefully the pockets aren't. It looks like it's gonna be just right where it needs to be. This drops down here and then this comes up that way. So I think this is gonna be perfect. The other reason I think these jeans are gonna be perfect, they don't have pockets on the back. When I clip this and overlay it like I normally do my denim skirts, I think it's gonna be perfect. Yep. I'm so glad I kept these. Um, and now I'm gonna try to match the denim as close as I can. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact, but I do want it to be in the family. Like I don't wanna do like a light wash. I do want the jeans to have a similar, um, a similar hue, okay? So we got our shorts. Well, Okay, we're gonna jump right into this upcycle. Now, I want to recreate this skirt that I got from Urban Revival. I love the fit of it, I love the shape of it. Everything about it is like A1 perfect. But of course I love me some denim, so we're gonna make this out of denim. So the first thing I did was grab a pair of jeans that I knew would work. These jeans, they fit pretty good. They were a little big in the waist, but they fit in the hips. I love the fact they had slanted pockets. So I just took the skirt from Urban Revival, laid it right on top, and I am using my chalk pencil to draw the same shape of the Urban Revival skirt on top of those jean tops. Now it's curved, so I had to drop it down ever so slightly so that it dropped below the pockets. I did not want to interfere with the pockets. I could have brought it up a little bit higher, but my goal was to make the skirt just a little bit longer than the Urban Revival skirt. The Urban Revival skirt is really short and I have to wear shorts up underneath it because if I bend over ever so slightly, the skirt is, is coming up. All right, now I'm just going to go in, clip the crotch area that seam there uh, making sure that that lays flat since I am cutting across I shouldn't have to go in and sew anything down um, but we'll see once we get started with the construction so now I'm just trimming off I did end up cutting into the pocket but it's it's okay so now I have the basic shape ready I can put that to the side next I take the urban revival skirt I turn it inside out I take a piece of muslin and lay the muslin on top what I want to do now is create the piece that goes on the inside of the skirt this is a stabilizing piece of fabric that is the shape of the bottom portion of the skirt. And it's kind of like on this curve and you'll see as I start to trace it. So I got a big enough piece of muslin to go on top and I can, it covers, you know, the whole skirt. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my blue chalk pencil and I'm basically tracing the shape onto the muslin so that I can create a pattern. This piece is really important because really you cannot create a bubble skirt without a stabilizing piece up underneath. It doesn't matter if it goes all the way up to the waist, if it's a drop waist, if it's a long skirt to your ankle, if it's gonna be a bubble skirt, it needs a stabilizing piece underneath. And that is the piece that I'm creating right now. So as you can see, I'm tracing it. I'm making it a little bit darker so you guys can see it on camera. And then I'm gonna move that skirt out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece out. All right, I'm gonna take that piece, lay it back on top of the skirt, just to make sure that 
the cut is correct now I did give myself about an extra inch and a half because I do want my skirt to be just slightly longer than the Urban Revival skirt okay now it's time to create the bubble portion or the ruffle portion of the skirt and this method can be used whether it's a short or long drop waist or not we're trying to create a pattern from a skirt that's already ready made what i ended up doing was i measured from the side seam to the side seam i actually took my tape measure <laughs> and found the side seam right there. And I measured at this fold pretty much, if I spread this out to you, for you like that, you can see there's a little bit of a crease there. I took my tape measure and I measured all the way around. I took the time, it maybe took about five minutes, I stretched it out. Even if I just went in like two inch increments, stretching out the gathers all the way around. And I did this because I wanted to know exactly how wide this fabric was. And it ended up being 37 inches, which means 37 times two, that was how long that piece of fabric was. So that's what I needed to match when I was gonna recreate. The bottom portion was most important I realized that this portion around here was a lot smaller. I could have gone in and measured that, but I just took a guess. If I had extra fullness in there, it was fine with me because I really wanted, I really wanted to have the bubble. Okay, now after I've gone in and figured out how long this piece needs to be, I need to now create the shape of the bubble portion. So I went in with the muslin, laid it on top, and again, I began to trace around so that I could get the general shape. Then I needed to extend that muslin piece so that it would match up with the same measurements that I'd come up with. I also needed to make sure that it was longer on the sides and shorter in the middle because I didn't want I wanted the bottom of the skirt to be kind of curved like it is in the skirt at, with Urban Revival. So I wanted to mimic that same shape. Hey y'all, it's a few days later. I am just getting back around to this project and my battery's dying in my camera. I'll be right back. Okay, fresh battery in. We are going to use the scraps that I have left over from the last project. Now, we started with the pattern, which was coming along, and then it wasn't. It was coming along until it wasn't. And I think what I'm going to end up having to do is piece it together. So I need two of these for the front plus 10 inches and two for the back. So this is the piece that goes up underneath. The piece that's underneath is just straight. This gets gathered and attached and that's what creates the bubble. Okay, so for the piece underneath, I'm not gonna use denim. I'm gonna just use regular cotton because denim is already super thick. I'm gonna go on ahead and start these to each other, overlapping them however they need to be overlapped. You know, I really love the exposed seams. That does it for me. So, we're gonna do that. I'm trying to use the lighter weight denim. I'm trying not to make this so heavy. This I'll be able to cut one out of. And then I'll be able to cut this one, all right? Then we'll go and we'll piece some more together and we'll cut more. So, and this has to come out even more. This has to curve 
a little more this way. So we're just gonna piece this together and then I'll show you once I put the pattern piece on top. But I'm gonna get some pins so I can start pinning. All right, so now I wanna start piecing my denim together. Obviously, if you are purchasing fabric outright off the bolt, this, piece, this part of the project you can skip. If you've already got large pieces of denim that you don't need to piece together, then you know you can skip this but if you are going to use other denim from other projects or just jeans that you have now i typically will pin my patchwork pieces together and then i'll take the pattern and lay it on top to make sure that i have enough i can't tell you how many times i have pieced denim together then put a pattern on top and then it didn't fit and I either had to add extra pieces of denim it's a lot of work so it's just better to go on ahead and measure it out before you know you've heard the saying measure twice cut once yeah that applies here so I'm just making sure that the pattern piece that I've created is going to cover this entire piece now I can fold it up and take it to the sewing machine Okay, I have stitched everything together for two parts of the skirt, the front and the back. I have my pattern piece laying it out on top, making sure that um, I extend it to the full length, which I've already measured. I move it around just a little bit. I make the adjustment, but essentially it's on the curve. Now, all bubble skirts, aren't created exactly like this. This is me creating the Urban Revival skirt that happens to be higher on the sides and lower in the front. So you can still create the same type of look and you don't necessarily have to have it on a curve. It's completely up to you. But I'm going on ahead, I'm adding my extra length at the top part of the curve and I'm cutting all the way around on both pieces. Now, these two pieces together are going to give me the width all the way around the skirt and I will have the fullness that I want because I still want that puffiness like the Urban Revival skirt. Next, I'm going to the sewing machine and there are a few areas that still needed to be stitched down. So I just went in and stitched down a little bit of the patchwork. Sometimes, pieces overlap and I miss a little piece so I have to go in and and stitch that so I do that first and then I go to the top of the ruffle that is the inner curved portion and I'm running a basting stitch across the top okay then I'm going to take the other piece and run a basting stitch across that as well. As I'm sewing and at the sewing machine, I realize that it's probably better for me to go ahead and gather and sew at the same time. Now, I do need to invest in a gathering foot, so I'm doing this the unconventional way and this is not the way I recommend, but if you don't have a gathering foot, then you gotta kind of do the gathers on your own. So, <laughs> so I went in and as I was sewing, I would gather the fabric together and pinch it and just sew right over it. Now, there's still a lot of room and give left in there. I did not put enough gathers in it to fit completely around the skirt, but that's okay because I will be able to continue gathering once I sew it together. So I'm just gonna speed past this because I think you get my point. <laughs> All right, now I need to create the stabilizing piece. You can use a piece of cotton underneath. I don't recommend 
a piece of denim because the denim is very thick and heavy and that's just gonna make your skirt heavier so I used a piece of white cotton I don't need anything else other than that now ideally it should have been a piece of navy blue cotton or something darker but all I had was white I am determined not to buy any fabric for any projects all right so now that I got that out of the way I'm back to the sewing machine I have the yoke piece for my project I do have to go in and stitch down the front similarly to the way I stitched down the front of the jeans when I did the uh, jeans upcycle to a skirt and I will place a card here or a link below either way you can refer back to that video to understand why stitching down this middle portion is really important so I want to make sure to get that out of the way um, and make sure that my yoke is nice and flat I didn't have to worry about that in the back so we are good to go now I have my stabilizing piece that I just cut I am going to go ahead and stitch the back and the front of the stabilizing piece together at the sides All right, now I'm going back to the bubble portion of the skirt and I'm going to sew the front and the back of the skirt at the side seams. I did go back on the other piece and I did gather it at the top. So that piece is done at the top as well as the bottom. So I'm just sewing the side seams. And now that the side seams are sewn together, I can bring the stabilizing piece into the picture.
Okay, so we have the stabilizing piece. We have the bubble portion, lower portion of the skirt. We're gonna turn that so that the right side is facing out. Um, again, you can see that this is much wider than it should be. Um, I'm gonna take the stabilizing piece and what I wanna do is begin to pin the stabilizing piece to the bottom of the skirt, right sides together. I start with my side seams, match those up, and then I'm going to evenly spread the gathers across the bottom. And this is gonna take a little time, but I find the center of the gathers, the center of the stabilizing piece, um, and then I just put pins all the way around. All right, so now I have the bottom portion stitched all the way around and I'm turning it inside out, bringing that stabilizing piece to the inside of the skirt. And again, you see why it would be a great idea for this to be blue because then you won't see anything. You can only see the white if I bend over, like I really have to be bending over for you to see the white, but otherwise you can't. Um, now, I'm going to match up the stabilizing piece with the top portion of the ruffle doing the same method that I did with the bottom just go in pin it um, and then we're going to match up the top of the ruffle with the denim and sew that together so I just sewed all the way around and now I'm back turning it right side out and we have the skirt. Now what I did not do, I did not do any top stitching or anything. Um, that's a matter of preference. I didn't wanna take away from the bubble. So that's why I didn't do any top stitch. I'm gonna go in and I'll just show you what I did on the inside. I'll try not to stick myself. All right, so now I just pinned on the inside all the way around. I'm just gonna go in and stitch, and then we're gonna do a try on. I've gotta find a cute top to go with it. I'm gonna try on a couple different tops and see what I come up with. I'm actually gonna put the Janae Naylor vest on top of this for a similar look. See how I like that. Um, we'll just play around with a few things. I wanna see how this looks and, ooh, you know what I should do? I should take that tan blazer and put those grommets in there and wear it with this skirt. I wonder will it be too long? We'll see. So the jury is out. Let's get this finished. Let me pull some stuff out of the closet and see what I like, and let's do a try on. Again, thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you like the way I styled it. Let me know which one you like the best. I styled it first with the vest from the Janae Naylor collection. I threw on my thrifted Chanel bag along with my thrifted circus in y mules which are so comfy i thrifted those in atlanta from finders keepers and then i also paired it with this white shirt that i picked up from zara a couple weeks ago and my thrifted silver leather pouch and my nude sandals from zara i thought this look was so great for summer and then i also paired it with a upcycled jacket that I created you'll see this video coming soon along with my thrifted Fendi baguette mama bag 
um i i just i love this i could see this skirt with a darker color jacket for the winter and boots so nice all right you guys see you next time bye